Seven months after presenting the 2018 budget to the National Assembly, President Muhammadu Buhari signed the appropriation document. However, he had a few reservations, which has further put a strain on the relationship between the executive and the legislature. What impact will this have on the nation and the economy? Specifically, my guest on this week's episode of the program looks at the issues arising from the 2018 budget. Hello there, welcome to Dateline Abuja, I'm Gloria Umezuke. About a month ago, the National Assembly passed a total sum of 9.12 trillion naira, an increase of 508 billion from the 8.61 trillion originally presented to the Assembly by President Muhammadu Buhari. However, the President raised some observations while signing the budget. We'll be talking about these objections in our interview with a public affairs analyst, but first, what are the stories that made the headlines within the week in the nation's capital? After which... The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, has directed all courts to adopt the use of electronic means in communicating legal processes with effect from July the 16th, 2018. Speaking in Abuja at a national summit on law revision organized by the National Law Reform Commission, Justice Onoga explains that the new system of communicating court processes will eradicate time wastage on the part of legal practitioners in addition to a speedy dispensation of justice. The manual forms of communication within the Nigerian courts will soon be phased out. Hence, court. Henceforth, lawyers who have acquired the legal email, email can now communicate electronically with the courts. However, by 16 July 2018, it becomes mandatory. The Supreme Court will only serve processes by electronic means, that is, the legal email, on all matters. Hence, all new filings as from 16 July 2018 must bear counsel's legal email address. To ensure compliance, it is also imperative that all heads of courts acquire the legal email addresses for their courts from the Judicial Information Technology Policy Committee especially for the litigation department staff. The federal government is to set up 94 ranches in 10 states across the country. This was made known by the Secretary of the National Economic Council Subcommittee at a media dialogue to present the National Livestock Transformation Plan, Dr. Andrew Kwasiri. According to him, all parties involved had agreed to plan for a peaceful process that will see an end to the killings resulting from the clashes. When NEC received the committee in April, it gave approval. The first approval was for the initial five states visited. However, when the report was written, we saw that the rest of the states have similar situation and the three additional states, so it came to um, uh, ten states. And what is the plan, therefore? We're going to have about 94 ranches in ten pilot states. The governors of these states and the private sector people in the state have made available land resources. In fact, we have received 21 gazetted grazing reserves from seven states, then the other three states. So that gave us 24 locations and we'll have 94 ranches and the ranches will be in clusters of four. And you see how the plan works out. President Muhammadu Buhari has signed the 2018 appropriation bill into law. President Buhari says he signed the document amidst various concerns, including undue additions to the budget by the National Assembly. But in order not to delay the activities of government, 
He appended his signature. The president enumerated several observations on the 9.1 trillion Naira budget submitted to the National Assembly in November 2017, but transmitted back on May 25, 2018. Another area of concern is the increase by the National Assembly of the provisions for statutory transfers by an ag aggregate of 73.96 billion Naira. Most of these increases are for recurrent expenditure at a time we are trying to keep down the cost of governance. An example of this increase is the budget of the National Assembly itself, which has increased by 14.5 billion naira. I am concerned about some of the changes that the National Assembly has made to the budget proposals that I presented. The National Assembly made cuts amounting to 347 billion naira in the allocation to 4,700 projects submitted to them for consideration and introduced 6,403 projects of their own, amounting to 578 billion naira. Meanwhile, the federal lawmakers have been responding to issues raised by the president during the budget signing ceremony. Addressing a news conference, the spokesman of both chambers of the National Assembly maintained that the president was not properly briefed by his appointees. It is our firm belief that if the president had been properly briefed by his appointees, he would not have raised most of the concerns that he did in his remarks at the budget signing. We took the decision to reduce the funds in some areas in order to ensure balance and equity in the spread and utilization of our national funds. Additionally, the figures given amount of the reductions made by the National Assembly were unduly as exaggerated as we did not make any substantial reduction on any project to the extent of affecting its implementation. It was stated that the legislature made cuts amounting to 347 billion, which were meant for 4,700 projects. Again, these reductions of 347 billion were made from low priority areas to <coughs> higher priority areas to support the generation of employment for our youth by micro, small, and medium enterprises. We therefore want to urge all executive appointees to ensure that they brief Mr. President with the truth and facts of their engagement to promote healthy and harmonious relationship between the executive and the legislature. There are efforts to engage members of the National Assembly on the introduction of over 6,000 projects at the cost of 578 billion naira in the 2018 budget. The move was announced by the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Mr. Udo Udoma. He was speaking during a public presentation of the breakdown of the 2018 budget. The implementation of a number of reforms, including significant spending on critical infrastructure, provided the necessary stimulus for the economy. And it is this spending, the expansionary fiscal policy and fiscal stance of this government, together with the various measures that we put in place that led to the economy emerging from recession by the end of the second quarter of 2017. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju has urged members of the community of Sahel Saharan State to proffer solutions to social and economic problems of the region to complement the fight against insurgency and transnational crimes by security forces in the region. The Vice President gave the charge at the opening of the 7th Minister of Defense of the community of Sahel Sahara States on the fight against terrorism through development actions. If there is anything that we have learned from our experience fighting Boko Haram in Nigeria, it is that the battle is as much social and economic as it is a military one. Indeed, the military aspect of the fight against terrorism is a short-term one. Enduring victory will only come from swiftly and diligently building on the military victories by implementing over the long term 
policies that comprehensively tackle poverty, illiteracy, and frustration, which predispose individuals and communities to imbibing extremist beliefs and ideologies. President Mohamed Buhari opened the 67th World Congress of the International Press Institute, where they call on journalists worldwide to address the menace of fake news and hate speech. The president said good journalism for the good of humanity was panacea for prevalent fake news, disinformation and hate speech. According to him, the changing media landscape, the explosion of social media and the rapidly evolving new technology have had profound impact on the media and media business. In a world where the borderline between hate speech and free speech has become blurred, good journalism matters. In an environment where fake news dwarfs investigative reporting, good journalism matters. For survival in an increasingly competitive field, good journalism matters. Good journalism promotes good governance. I therefore urge participants to give depth to the topic in your discussions and conclusions.